folks, my next guest tonight served as communications director for President George W. Bush and was a senior advisor to the 2008 McCann campaign. She's currently the host of MSNBC's Deadline White House. Please welcome Nicole Wallace. Nice to Thank see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. First day of impeachment hearings. Um, you've been on the air since 9 a.m. this morning, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Did you carb carbo load or anything to get it's through the day? An ugly diet of candy and coffee. Yes, yeah. So I'm a little. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for that. It's like running a marathon all day long. Without moving. With, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and somehow my nipples are bleeding. <laughs> Something like that. Now, uh, the Sondland Trump call. That's one yeah. of the, that, that's, that's one that's thing the that I hadn't heard before. Yeah. Yeah. What what is the ultimate significance of that to this story? So Sondland is the the most interesting character in all this, right? So I worked in Republican politics, and I you know. Sure, that. sure. I, I used to make fun of your boss a lot. Yeah, I know, I know. I I saw it a lot. Yeah, okay, good. Through things at the TV. You're sometimes. welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, we usually don't we usually don't get to these parts of the city. So thank you for having me welcome. inside inside. Exactly. Um, but the 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 Sondland story is so interesting because you know Donald Trump talked about human car in his inaugural address. Sure, sure. Sondland epitomizes that to me. He was a Republican fundraiser for the Bushes, and, and he was on Jeb Bush's team before he flamed out in the primaries. He finally gets what he seems to have sought for so long, a plum ambassadorship. And he ends up... A million dollars. A you million know, dollars to the inaugural million dollars, campaign. But he gave yeah. money to other politicians. This sure. is the, Trump's the first one who gives him an ambassadorship. He ends up in the middle of this messy scandal. He may or may not have perjured himself. I'm sure he has huge legal bills. And he's in the he's sort of in the eye of the storm. And there are real questions now about whether he is the smoking gun that leads this whole thing right to Donald Trump, who, unlike other scandals that you sort of work your way up and you try to figure out what the president knew and when he knew mm -hmm. it, this was directed and run by Donald Trump. Right. The very first piece of evidence we got was him on the phone call saying, you can have your military aid if you give us, if you give me some investigation. Right. And it didn't leak out. It didn't get, you know, handed to some deep state guy who handed it to a deep state girl who handed it to a Russian. He released it. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like uh, Junior releasing all the emails. Right. Yeah. Like the uh, stupid does not fall from the tree. <laughs> you you uh, you were upset over Laura Ingram's questioning <laughs> the patriotism of uh, Vindman, okay, who was one of the national security officials who was listening in on the call and testified that uh, this was not good. It was definitely a quid pro quo. Um, this is this is what they said on Laura Ingram's show, and this is what you said in response, Jim. Here we have a U.S. national security official who is advising Ukraine while working inside the White House, apparently against the president's interest, and usually they spoke in English. Isn't that kind of an interesting angle on this story? I, I find that astounding, and you know, some people might call that espionage. Except those people aren't chicken like the three of you, and they know that he passed a background check that the president's daughter and son-in-law didn't. Okay. Take it. You're doing this. Are you doing this because you regret having said it? Well, so I've got the swear jar in my house, and my seven-year-old's like, $20, Mom. And it's like his favorite thing to watch. Like, can I see you say chicken <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. So instead of watching, you know... Well, what do you think has happened to uh, your, your, your former... Uh, Republican side. colleagues. You know, yeah, so what has happened to your side? Because the Republicans, you know, I don't always agree with what their, their policies might be, but they have made a very uh, good run at acting on what they considered principle. Where is the principle now? Look, my, my problem with that specifically and, and, and just the galling nature of that exchange was that one, Laura Ingram knows better. She's a lot of things. Uh. Stupid isn't one of them. Uh. And 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 what she what she what she teed up there with John Yu, mm -hmm. 
who you know very well, you you, you were very aware of it at the time, sure. wrote a He's lot of... He's the torture memo guy. Correct. Yeah. Um, he knows better. He worked at the highest levels of the Justice Department. He knows Colonel Colonel Vindman isn't a spy. And so just to leave it out there like, ooh, I don't know, isn't it weird they speak another language? Ooh, maybe a spy. Next question. Is so reckless, is so scary, represents the debasement, not just of the right, but the debasement of, of what happens on that on that program. Why did it happen? I don't Why know. Why is this happening? I don't have the answer. You've to that. said that they've been kidnapped, that their <laughs> souls have been kidnapped by Donald Trump. Did you not well, say that? I, I probably did. It's been a yes. long day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have, I, have a, I have a slight problem with your analogy with that there, because kidnappers don't cooperate. Right. I mean, people who are kidnapped don't cooperate with their kidnapper. That's These a fair people point. have volunteered to be right. kidnapped. Right. And, and look, if you watch the testimony today, they had like seven different ways to have their souls kidnapped or hijacked. I mean, they were like, oh, this didn't work. Let's try this. Calling Vimin a spy didn't, didn't get Trump out of the trouble he's in. Let's try this. We'll say the Ukrainians didn't know we were withholding aid. Then it's not a crime. I mean, just ludicrous excuse after ludicrous excuse. Yesterday, talking points went out to the Republicans. And like before they hit send, Donald Trump had undermined them. I mean, I, if I had any capacity for sympathy for my old party, it would be so sad. It would be embarrassing, but, so but I don't. You say your old party, so you're no longer a Republican? I'm still a registered Republican because okay. I can barely renew my driver's license, let alone go down mm -hmm. and re-register. But I'm not a practicing Republican. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're not a practicing, okay. We have to take a little bit of a break, but please don't go away. You either, because we'll be right back with more Nicole Wallace. <laughs>